Our next presentation is from the Federal Aviation Administration. The, <laughs> the FAA is an enterprise GIS whose mission is to provide the safest and most efficient airspace system in the world. They are modernizing workflows and developing innovative solutions internally and externally. So to tell us more, please welcome Nate Ron, Brian Murphy, Langston Majette, and Heidi Gauss. Thank you, Marcella. Have you ever been on a cross-country flight and woken up to this? And then you look out the window and see nothing but clouds? How does the pilot know where they're going? For most of us, we get on a plane, we sit down, we read a book or watch a movie. Several hours later, we land safely at our destination, positively uneventful. And that's because the FAA uses a tremendous amount of data and analysis to support over 100,000 flights a day across the US. Let's take a look at a flight from LA to DC. The FAA has developed a system of airways that are used to move air traffic across the country. Think of them as highways in the sky. These are shown on a series of 54 en route aeronautical charts. As we near our destination, take a closer look at a chart, we see that there is an incredible amount of information there. If we peel back the curtain, we see our airway lines and our airspace shown in blue. Our airways are connected by a series of navigational aids and designated points. Pilots use these points to interact with air traffic control. And as we approach our destination, our pilot communicates with air traffic control before entering the airspace over the DC region. This airspace provides the framework for controllers to simultaneously manage traffic over the three major airports in our area. And as we prepare to land, we see that our approach was designed to keep us out of the restricted airspace over the National Mall and the Pentagon. And as the mall starts to come into view, we can now see the Washington Monument, where you might see an idyllic landmark if the FAA sees a vertical obstruction. We've evaluated our approach surface to make sure we're clear of any of these obstructions as we prepare to land. And if the pilot needs to abort their landing, we've planned for that too. The missed approach procedure allows the pilot to safely exit the landing area, clear any incoming traffic, and enter a holding pattern if they're unable to land on the first attempt. Positively uneventful, except you might have to wait a couple extra minutes to send that text message that says, hey, just landed, smiley face. <laughs> and now, my team's gonna share with you the many ways the FAA is using technology to modernize our processes and enable innovation. Brian? Thanks, Nate. Analysts used to receive a stack of procedural updates containing hundreds upon hundreds of proposed changes. We used to go through all of this paper on a daily basis to find changes to each individual chart. Now, with ArcGIS for Aviation, the FAA is continually updating the information seen on these en route charts. The data is now provided electronically in a flat text file. We've modernized from a manual process to a data-driven process. We use data loaders that leverage the data interoperability extension to import this file. Let's take a quick tour of the chart update process. We use data Using automated change detection, the data reviewer allows our specialists to locate and validate changes. This selection shows a new route feature into BWI. Some repeatable rule-based processes have already been completed, like feature annotation, like feature symbology and annotation generation. But there's still some work to do. Our process is flexible enough to allow the specialists to use their cartographic knowledge to turn this data into a beautiful map. Once completed, we update the reviewer table to indicate the change has been processed. This is our system of record. We can track who, what, when, and why. The modernization of our en route chart system has streamlined the maintenance process across multiple charts. We've decreased opportunities for human error, as well as reduced production cost and time. This is the foundation of the FAA's chart modernization efforts. Let's take a quick look at another type of chart. 
Visual flight rules, or VFR charts, seen here created with our legacy process and not the data-driven process. They're beautiful charts, and they're used extensively by general aviation and private pilots, giving visual cues for flight. There's a lot of information that's shared between the en-route charts and the VFR charts. It's still aeronautical information at the core. But there's more to it than that. We've leveraged the data-driven process used to create our en-route charts and started to move those concepts into the VFR world. Through collaboration with our friends at USGS, we can access data from the national map to integrate their authoritative data to help create our charts. Some of that data include elevation, transportation, such as streets and railroads, as well as hydrography layers, all used as visual guides for pilots. Our collaboration with the USGS is continuing the modernization of our work. Creating these charts is just the first step. The next step is getting this information into the hands of everyone across the FAA. With the data-driven process, we can immediately deploy focused applications that allow exploration of our information in creative ways. For example, geocoding. You may be thinking of address matching. Well, we think aeronautical features. With over 70,000 designated points in our system, you can start to see the creativity of procedure designers really come through. Here's, here's a fix that's just west of Pittsburgh shown on, a, on our en route chart. It's a favorite of mine, Donut. Adding data from the Living Atlas, teams now across the FAA can bring in live weather warnings from the National Weather Service, as well as current active wildfires, which could adversely affect flight. So imagine we want to fly from Phoenix to Nashville. The routes, to, the routes return use the directions based on the highways in the sky and not the roads on the ground. This tool allows us to reroute based on real-time events. These routes are dynamic. This is an example we can use Thank you. <laughs> this is an example of we can, we can now use technology to provide better access to the authoritative data across the agency. But our efforts don't stop there. Last year, the FAA administrator started the External Data Access Initiative to improve the public's access to FAA data. Leveraging the work already done, we were able to create this public open data site in a matter of weeks. Here, we can search on categories or go to particular feature types, like special use airspace. From this site, industry stakeholders and developers can access our data by downloading it in, in different types, as well as tying directly into the provided APIs. The goal here is to spur innovation, provide better opportunities, and advance the safety and efficiency of the aviation industry. And now, I'd like to hand it over to my friend Langston from the FAA's Emerging Technologies Integration Team, who's leveraging similar technologies, integrating UAS into the national airspace system. Thank you, Brian. Unmanned aircraft systems, commonly referred to as drones, is a rapidly growing field of aviation. To put things in perspective, We've registered over 690,000 drones since it became a mandate in late 2015. That's three times more the number of actively air registered airplanes we have today. These drones are broken down into two categories, recreational drones flown for hobbyists or for fun purposes, and commercial drones, those being flown for business. As technology in this field continues to develop, we have the unique opportunity to leverage GIS applications to help us achieve safe integration. There are currently over 19,000 airports in the United States. So just looking at this data, you can see that the interaction between airplanes and drones is bound to happen. In fact, it's happening now. Therefore, we continue to collaborate with industry to maintain a safe national airspace system for everyone. For this reason, we have a five-mile notification rule for recreational operators. 
And that simply states, if you fly your drone within five miles of an airport, you must notify that airport. What you're seeing here is a simple buffer, something that we're probably all familiar with. Simple enough, right? Right? right. Thank you. <laughs> In fact, the FAA's Before You Fly app already provides this entry level of spatial analysis. But let's take this a step further. Let's say a recreational operator wants to fly their drone within five miles of Dulles Airport. They submit a notification which, tell, which tells us when and where they plan to fly, and our controllers can use this application to get a better understanding of where that drone should be. Recreational operators are required to operate their drone within visual line of sight. Using a few metrics, such as drone size, local terrain, and altitude, we can approximate this parameter. Combine this with the five-mile rule, and we can get a more exact parameter or understanding of where that drone should be. Equipped with this information, air traffic controllers and airport operators can use this to provide more accurate advisories to other air traffic in the area, and this increases safety. Let's switch gears for a minute and talk about commercial drones. Under the small UAS rule, a commercial drone can fly freely below 400 feet in uncontrolled airspace. They can fly into controlled airspace as well, but that requires an authorization from air traffic controllers. So our challenge is, how do we manage thousands of new drone flight requests while maintaining the existing level of safety to airport operations? So what if the controllers at Dulles had the capability to identify areas of their airspace where drones can fly. And we're talking low altitude, 400 feet and below, areas with little to no impact on existing operations. What would that look like? Now, that's great. I personally think it's beautiful. But airport operations and traffic flows are dynamic. Using this tool, controllers can adjust these parameters in real time based off of airport and runway configuration. These dynamic, operators, um, these dynamic parameters allow drone operators to fly even closer to the airport. As drone technology becomes more pervasive, we'll see more and more needs for this close-in access. Think about it. Inspections of airport fuel farms, inspections of parking garages, these are all real-world scenarios that we must be prepared to enable. Increasingly complex operations require more complex analysis. These are the protected surfaces for the instrument approach procedures at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport. That's a mouthful. We can use these protected surfaces to do performance-based analysis to see if we can allow drones to operate in close proximity to runways. Commercial drones can fly 400 feet around and above obstacles. These are obstacles pulled from the FAA's database with that buffer applied to them. Let's say we received the request for a drone to operate for a construction company at this location. The location is just east of Atlanta Airport. This request could be to take aerial photos, could be to monitor progress, could be to deliver lunch, who knows, right? So let's combine this with a distance-based approach to allow drones to fly around airports, hypothetically. The further you get away from the airport, the higher your drone can fly. Our tool allows us to perform a line-of-sight analysis to conceptualize the view from the air traffic control tower. Now, this is, this is important because for an operation to happen this close, the controllers may want to keep an eye on all traffic in the area to maintain situational awareness. Using this analysis, controllers can see if there are any obstacles in the way that are going to present, prevent them from monitoring the the environment in totality. The green line at the bottom of the screen represents the requested drone operating area. As you can see, the vertical parameters exceed those of our fixed base distance approach of 200 and 300 feet, shown by the orange and blue lines. Because of this, we need to do a little bit more, more coordination and some more analysis. We consider the fact that this operation is outside of and below the approach slope surface shown in blue. Using our 3D analysis tool, we can get a bird's eye view of this data that we're analyzing to enable this drone operation. This is pretty cool. You can see your approach slope, you can see obstacles, and you can see the drone operating area. But wait, there's more. 
Adding in data from FlightAware, we can get an historical understanding of traffic flows and patterns into that runway. This, is, this allows us to see where airplanes should be and where that drone would like to be. This is how the FAA envisions using performance-based and operational-based data analysis to enable drone operations in close proximity to runways. Our ability to perform spatial analysis and provide data to private industry helps support and enhance drone operation efforts. Through these data exchanges, we work together to enable extended and beyond visual line of sight operations. Companies such as Precision Hawk, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, and CNN are part of our Pathfinder program. We work together to develop the way forward to achieve safe drone integration. These partnerships are critical as the FAA continues to optimize technology and leverage efficiencies as we continue to build the data that supports the apps that will truly run the national airspace system. On behalf of my colleagues and our esteemed demonstration pilot, Heidi, thank you. Thank you all for those wonderful examples. The FAA is truly making the maps that run and ensure the safety of our na national airspace. 